Hey everybody, welcome back to a new video. Now, ever since solar generators have been a thing, there's always been an argument between choosing a gas generator and a solar generator. Now, just FYI, I really hate the term solar generator, so I'll be calling this a power station for the rest of the video. So in the next couple minutes, I wanna talk about the advantages and disadvantages to each one so we can understand why you'd wanna choose either option. So let's start with gas generators. Right here, I have a new model from Pulsar. This is their 4,000 watt dual fuel option, meaning it can be powered from propane or gasoline. This is fairly affordable at a little bit over $500. Now listing some of the advantages of a gas generator, they are both affordable and a reliable source of power. They come in different sizes and shapes. They have multiple fuel sources like gasoline, diesel, propane, and even natural gas. Generators can be very efficient and will run as long as you have fuel stored up to keep them going. Gas generators aren't perfect though. Some downsides include they have to be ran outdoors due to carbon monoxide and exhaust fumes. They produce a lot of noise and smell and this can attract unwanted attention during a power outage. You must also store flammable fuel somewhere around your home when not in use. And finally, if your required fuel source isn't readily available, you won't be able to run your generator. Now, what about power stations? If you haven't seen one of these before, they have large batteries inside them and they have an inverter which can run different appliances. Now this particular model is the Blue Eddy AC200L. It's one of their newer releases and these start out at around $1,400. Now listing some of the advantages of a power station, most brands currently offer expansion batteries so you can get longer run times. These power stations can charge up with solar or AC power. They are basically silent when in use, which means your neighbors won't know you have power if the power is out most units are also designed to be used indoors, which is much more secure against theft. Power stations also have a few downsides. For example, they are fairly expensive up front, usually double or triple the cost of a typical gas generator. Once your power station battery is dead, you'll have to recharge it up to use it again. And if you don't have an AC power source or the sun isn't shining, you won't be able to recharge it. Now I understand that the list of pros and cons that I've talked about for each of these units is not a complete list. So if you have any others that come to mind, please share by posting a comment down below. Each one of these systems has their own particular use case. And in this video, I'm not gonna recommend that you choose one or the other. I'm actually gonna recommend that you choose both so you can have the ultimate backup system because you always want a backup to your backups. Now in the next section of the video, I wanna talk about why there's a benefit to having both backup options. Some people are in the power station club and some people are in the gas generator club but there's a benefit to having both and they can supplement each other. For example, let's go through a normal uh, power outage scenario. So with me having a power station, what I would do is I would have my critical loads running off the power station. So my fridge, my freezer, home internet, uh, some other critical loads, probably around 500 watts or so. Now earlier today, I was able to charge this up with this solar array at over 850 watts, and that would have gone through the entire day just fine. But right now you can see we have a bunch of clouds. So eventually that 500 watt load is going to take this down to zero and it's gonna shut off. If it's nighttime or it's cloudy, I don't have a way to charge this up if the power's out. So that's where a gas generator comes into play. The gas generator can produce a lot of power and these can charge fairly quickly. Most power stations charge at around 1800 watts. And so I can have the benefit of this gas generator only running for an hour or two so I can save on gas or fuel that this is running on, charge this up, and then go for another eight to 10 hours without an issue. So now I wanna go through a similar scenario, but let's say I just have a gas generator with two to three days of fuel on hand, meaning that I can run this nonstop for two to three days. So as the power's out, I'm running my load. It's only a 500 watt load, but I have to run my generator 24 seven, so I'm using a lot of that fuel. This is also creating a lot of noise, so strangers or neighbors that aren't prepared or maybe that don't have power may be interested in trying to get this. So let's say what happens if the power outage is longer than two to three days and you don't have the ability to get more fuel, then this is gonna be uh, out of fuel, it's not going to run, and you're gonna lose um, the ability to run medical devices or uh, the internet or um, keep your refrigerated goods from being spoiled. So the downside of just having a gas generator is that you're going through much more fuel. You're gonna run out of your fuel more quickly and you're also making a lot more noise. So by having both of these, they can supplement each other. You're gonna get much longer run times. And you're gonna make a lot less noise. Now in preparation for this video, I was looking for an affordable gas generator that had dual fuel capabilities that could charge these power stations at full speed without being overloaded. 
And so I think this option here is an excellent option, coming in slightly above $500. Now it's important to note that the smaller generators than this one, the 2000 watt generators, usually can handle 1600 to 1800 watts continuous. So if you try to charge a power station, usually it's going to overload the generator. So you have to drop down your charging speed. But if you go with a larger generator like this, for example, this one's rated at 4000 watts peak or 3200 watts continuous, this should be able to handle the full 1800 watt charging rate without being overloaded. So let's go ahead and do a test on the Pulsar 4000 watt generator. I'm going to get the generator running. We're gonna connect in the power station and see if we can charge at the full 1800 watts without it shutting down. So this first test is going to be on gasoline. So we'll go ahead and put it on to full choke and uh, we'll start this thing up. So the gasoline test worked well. We were able to get the full 1800 watts charging on the power station. But because this is a dual fuel option, I wanna test with propane as well. You'll usually see a little less power with propane. So I wanna see if we can get the full charging amount running the generator off propane. Okay, so we go ahead and flop this over to run. We'll give it a try. Okay, so the propane test was successful. We were able to charge the power station into full 1800 watts when running on propane. And there are a couple advantages to having a dual fuel generator running off propane. For example, the exhaust smell is way cleaner. It doesn't stink as much. You don't get that stink, you know, all over your clothes. And also the storage of propane, um, it, it lasts much longer than gasoline. So gasoline has a shelf life and I'm not sure if there's a shelf life to propane other than the actual container going bad. So my plan is to always run this off propane in the future. Um, I have a bunch of these tanks stored. Um, I just wanted to show testing both options to show you that it does work fairly easily. You just have to hook the propane up and then it runs straight off of it. Now in the rest of the video, I'm gonna include how I got this set up for um, the first time running, um, checking the spark plug gap, filling up the oil, things like that, and then some additional tests. So if you are interested in learning more about this generator, stick around. If not, let me know what you guys think about having both these setups for the ultimate backup solution. Well, now that I have everything out of the box, I wanna get this thing ready for the first time startup. Inside the box, you get a six foot propane hose. You also get your engine oil, which is 21 fluid ounces. You have a tool kit and an oil funnel along with the user manual. Now the first thing that I wanna do is access the spark plug so we can check the gap and the model number. You just remove this panel and then we get access to the spark plug. So in order to get the spark plug out, we have to remove the cable that's attached to the top. And this is kind of a tight space. So let's see if we can get this out. Okay, there we go. Now the toolkit does include a spark plug wrench. So let's go ahead and take it out. So the stock spark plug is a Torch F7RTC. In the user manual, the spark plug gap should be between 0.6 and 0.8 millimeters. Now we wanna make sure that the gap on the spark plug is correct. So I have this spark plug gap tool here and on the back is millimeters. So I'm gonna turn it over and it's supposed to be between 0.6 and 0.8 and it's right under 0.8. So kinda of hard to see that, but it is gapped properly. So now we just reinstall the spark plug using the tool. You wanna to go as tight as you can by hand to make sure you don't double thread it. So now it's tight. We're gonna use the wrench to really tighten it down. And then we're good. So in the next step, we're gonna be putting engine oil into the generator. It does come with its own oil and also this oil filler. So you just unlock this panel and then it comes right off. And then we wanna remove the dipstick. 
We'll set that aside. And then we just install the oil filler and then pour in the oil. Now one quick tip before putting in the engine oil, I've taken a silver Sharpie and marked the level of the oil on this original oil container. So once I pour this into the engine, I can actually refill this with aftermarket oil and then I have another bottle ready to go with the exact amount of oil needed. So now we're gonna take the oil dipstick and we're just gonna screw it in. And we're just gonna check the level of the oil to make sure that it is full or, uh, you know, so it's not too high or too low. So what we wanna do is check to see, okay, it's right in the middle there, so we are good. So we'll just reinstall this and just make sure it's nice and snug. Okay, I will say with the handle and wheels, this thing's pretty easy to move around. And now that we have the spark plug done and the oil in here, we're ready for our first time startup. So let me go ahead and just fold up this handle and then we'll go through that process. Now letting this run for the first time is fairly easy. I just put a gallon of ethanol free gasoline into the fuel tank. What we do is we turn this over to start choke and then uh, we give it a pull. So let's see how many pulls it takes to start this thing up. Wow guys, I can't believe that started up on the first pull. I'm gonna go ahead and let it idle for a few minutes. So for the break-in process, I have this set to eco mode and I'm running a 500 watt heater. I'm gonna let this run for about an hour or so and then I'll turn it off eco mode. Okay, so we just finished running this for an hour on eco mode, it ran really smoothly. Now on the screen, there's actually an hour meter. It's hard to see during the day, but it does show one hour that it's ran. So I've just shut this off so I can check the oil level and make sure everything's good with the generator. In the next test, I want to run a max load on the Pulsar generator. It's rated at 3200 watts continuous. So to make up that load, I have a 1500 watt floor heater. I have a 1500 watt heat gun and a small portable 250 watt electric heater. Now I'm going to track this through two watt meters and we'll see if we can get close to that 3200 watts. Now keep in mind, I am at 4,500 feet elevation, so I might not be able to get this full power from the generator. So my final test on the generator, I want to do some sound testing. I'm going to do four different tests. I'm going to do two tests on the concrete, eco mode and regular mode, and then I'm going to slide it forward and I'm going to do two tests with eco mode and normal mode on the grass. So this is all 23 feet away. Let's see how loud it is. Okay, so that sums up the testing for the 4,000 watt Pulsar dual fuel generator. You guys will have to let me know what you guys think about the performance down in the comments section. Now, if you wanna learn more about this generator, I'll include a link down in the video description and also with that 15% off discount code. Now, Explorer Bear was kind enough to send this out for testing. They are a distributor for this generator so you can learn more on their website. Once again, that will be down in the video description. Well, I appreciate you guys sticking around to the end of the video. I'll recommend a couple other videos if you guys are interested. And on your way out, please smash the thumbs up button if you like the video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one.